In Matthew 14, 22 through 33, an incredible story unfolds. You probably know it. It's the story of Jesus and then Peter walking on water. But you see, there's so much more to this story than just the headlines. And so what I want to do is I want to dive into this story because I think there's some powerful and practical lessons that can be applied to our life today. So let's dive into the story of Peter walking on water and see what it has for us today. It's important whenever we read the Bible to read it in context. That means we read the verses before and the verses that are after. That way we can have a full picture of what is happening and what the Bible has for us today. In the case of the story of Peter walking on water, immediately before this happened, Jesus was teaching on a mountainside and the people that he was teaching got hungry. And so he performed this incredible miracle where he fed 5,000 people with just a few loaves and a few fish. And then after this miracle is when our story picks up. Jesus sends his disciples to sail across the sea to go to the town they're going to go to next. And he goes to a mountainside to pray. And this is par for the course. This is pretty normal. This is what Jesus would often do. He'd go to a mountainside and send his disciples away to do something else. But things are about to get a lot more interesting. That night, as the disciples are sailing across the sea, a storm picks up. And Matthew records that there's strong winds and violent waves. And remember, the disciples are fishermen. They're experienced fishermen. They've sailed on the sea their whole life. They know what to expect. They know what to experience. And so when they say it's violent waves and strong winds, that means that they're probably in a pretty bad storm. And they were frightened. The disciples battle this storm the whole night. And then as dawn approaches, Jesus decides to go to the disciples who are in the middle of the storm, in the middle of the sea. So how does he get there? He walks. He walks on water towards the disciples. The disciples eventually see this figure walking towards them, but they can't quite figure out who it is or what it is. So they assume it's a ghost, which was a common superstition in that day that the sailors who had drowned during previous storms would haunt the waters. And so it's kind of a logical a conclusion that it was a ghost because they didn't expect Jesus to walk on water, that nobody had ever seen that before. So we shouldn't bash them for not recognizing that it's Jesus because they had no background to tell them that Jesus could or would do that. He'd never done that before. Knowing their fear, Jesus calls out to him and says, take courage. It is I. Do not be afraid. And this phrase that Jesus says, it is I, was a common phrase that he used to claim his deity. And what he's saying is, you don't need to be afraid because I'm here with you. I love how Dr. Tom Constable says it. He says, where, where Jesus is present, fear is unwarranted. Jesus is telling them, I'm with you. You do not need to be afraid. And if the story were to end here, there'd be plenty that we could glean from it, but things are about to get even more interesting. Peter, who's in the boat with the disciples and who's known for being a little headstrong, sometimes he speaks before he thinks, which gets him in trouble, but it also sometimes allows him to experience things that nobody else does. He sees Jesus coming towards him and he hears Jesus say, it is I, and he responds with, Lord, if it is you, tell me to come to you. And Jesus responds with a simple word, come. And with remarkable faith, in the middle of a storm with wind and wave, Peter climbs out of the boat. And it's easy for us to criticize Peter for what happens next, but stay in this moment for just a minute. Think about the faith the trust that Peter is displaying in Jesus. None of the other disciples were willing to get out of the boat. Only Peter did that. And he was willing to do it, not in a calm sea, but a stormy sea with violent waves and strong winds. He gets out of the boat and he walks on water towards Jesus. But, but, Matthew 14, 30, interrupts this incredible moment of Peter walking on water with a conjunction. But, see, as Peter was walking towards Jesus on top of the water, on top of the wind and the waves, he starts noticing his circumstances around him. He starts noticing how strong the winds were. He starts noticing how big the waves were. He starts noticing how violent the storm is. And he begins to get afraid. He takes his eyes off Jesus and instead focuses on the storm 
around him. And Matthew says that Peter was afraid, you think, and began to sink. You see, Peter's doubt was about to take him out. And as he's going under, as he's about to go fully under the water with one last gasp for air, he yells, Lord, save me. And Jesus doesn't hesitate. He immediately reaches out his hand and he pulls Peter out of the waves. Just as Peter was about to go under, Jesus reaches out and saves him. And after Peter was safe, Jesus rebukes him. And I love how Mark Moore, in his book, The Chronological Life of Christ, describes this rebuke. Here's what he says. Jesus rebuked him, Peter, for his weak faith, even though it was stronger than that of the other disciples who remained in the boat. Jesus used this rebuke to help Peter and the other disciples see the constant confidence in himself was absolutely necessary. Peter became both a good example and a bad one. Jesus rescued him as God rescued many others from watery graves. And still, that's not the last miracle of this story. As Peter and Jesus climb back into the boat, the wind and the waves miraculously calm. You see, this story of Jesus walking on water and then Peter walking on water doesn't contain just two miracles. It contains three. The calming of the storm and Peter and Jesus walking on water. And yet, Despite all these incredible miracles, despite all these incredible things that have happened, none of those are the climax of the story. You see, Matthew writes this story in such a way that's clear. The climax of this story is not the miracles. It's the disciples' worship of Jesus. It's the first time that the disciples see the power of Jesus and choose to worship him. And that's how this story ends. All right, now that we know the story of Peter walking on water and Jesus walking on water, I want to switch gears and I want to look at some practical and powerful lessons that we can apply to our lives today based on this story. The first lesson is this. Peace is found not in the absence of storms, but in the presence of Jesus. You see, Jesus didn't invite Peter into the water once he calmed the storm. No, he invited Peter into the water in the middle of the storm. The calming of the storm didn't come until later. And the rebuke of Peter was that he took his eyes off Jesus. He started focusing on the storm around him rather than focusing on Jesus. Because when we keep our eyes on Jesus, we can have peace, even in the middle of the chaos and the storms around us. Peter's lack of faith came from taking his eyes off of Jesus because peace is found in the presence of Jesus, not in the absence of storms. And that's the opposite of how many of us operate. We think peace, we think a good life, we think what Jesus promised us is smooth sailing. That he promised us if we follow him, if we trust in him, he'll give us exactly what we want, that we'll have a good life, an easy life. But Jesus never promised us that. In fact, he promised us the opposite. He said that you will have trials, you will have struggles, you will have storms that come up in your life. But you can still have peace, you can still have joy, you can still have hope, even in the middle of those storms, if you keep your eyes on me. You see, peace is found not in the absence of storms, but in the presence of Jesus. So keep your eyes on him. The second lesson that we can learn from Peter walking on water is that faith requires us to step outside the boat. See, we like comfort, we like safety, we don't like taking huge risks, but sometimes God tells us we need to step outside the boat. And that's what Peter did. He hopped out of the boat when Jesus said, come, and sometimes you and I, we need to do the same thing. Sometimes we need to step outside the boat, step outside our comfort zone, go where Jesus is calling us to go rather than going to what's comfortable for us. And I get it, it's scary to step out the boat. It must have been scary for Peter as well. And you might stumble, you might fall. Peter began to sink, but take heart that Jesus is right there with you. And just as he reached out his hand to pull Peter out of the water, he'll reach out his hand to rescue us when we struggle, when we fail as well. So step outside the boat. I know it's scary, but I promise you, Jesus is there with you and it will be worth it. 
The third lesson that we can learn from Peter walking on water is that without Jesus, you will sink. Peter's walk on water was short-lived. It was short-lived because he took his eyes off Jesus and he began to sink, but he learned an important lesson that day. He learned that without Jesus, he couldn't make it. He would go under, he would sink. And listen, I see this all the time as a pastor. I see people that come in and they, they got stuck in this, this sin or this temptation and it's often because they took their eyes off Jesus and they began to sink. The struggles, the trials, the temptations, the difficulties of life overtook them because they took their eyes off Jesus. They stopped focusing on him. You see, life is full of storms. Big storms, scary storms, storms with strong winds and huge waves. And if you take your eyes off Jesus, those waves will get you. Those winds will knock you over. But if you keep your eyes on Jesus, you will not sink. So keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't get distracted by what's going on around you, by the difficulties, by the trials, by the temptations. Instead, focus on Jesus. Keep your eyes on him and you will not sink. The fourth lesson that we can learn from Peter's walk on water is that worship should be our response. Maybe this is the most important lesson that we can learn from this story, and that's when we see the power of Jesus, worship should be our response. Proclaiming his goodness and his power should be our response to the miracles that we experience in our life. Matthew intentionally highlights the disciples' response because the point of this story wasn't Peter's faith or lack thereof. The point of this story was the power of Jesus. And the only appropriate response when we encounter that power is to worship him. You see, worship should be our response to what Jesus does in and through us. The final lesson that we can learn from this story is that God wants to do incredible things through you. You see, I believe that God has an incredible story that he wants to tell in and through your life. God has those walk on water stories that he wants to tell through you. But you see, the problem is we often settle for what's safe, for what's comfortable, rather than taking a risk, stepping outside the boat and stepping into the story that God has for us because it's, it's scary, it's difficult. But listen, God has something incredible for you. He wants to tell a good story through your life, just like he told through Peter. And listen, I bet Peter told this story for the rest of his life about how he walked on water, about how he almost sank and how Jesus rescued him and then miraculously calmed the storm. I believe Peter told that until his last day on earth. And listen, just as Jesus told an incredible story through Peter, he wants to tell an incredible story through you too. So take a risk. Step outside the comfort zone. Step into the story that God has for you. He has an incredible story waiting for you. The question for you is, will you let him tell it? Thanks for watching this video. I hope that it encouraged you and challenged you in your life and your faith. And I hope that it brought this incredible story back to life for you. If it did, would you share this with a friend so they too can benefit from this video? And then also like this video and subscribe to this channel so that you can stay up to date on future content that's coming out. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.